a happy Memorial Day to you. Um, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to create something a little patriotic for today's holiday. Now, up here in the northern Midwest, it's raining, been raining on and off all day, just like it does every Memorial Day, it seems, just to make it miserable for the campers out there. Um, so I hope you're enjoying your weather wherever you are on this Memorial Day. So again, we're going to be creating the American flag, and we're going to show you a couple of techniques here inside CorelDRAW and EasyStone to make this process a fairly simple one. So the first thing we're going to do is just drag a guideline down, go under the View menu here in CorelDRAW, and make sure the Snap to Guideline function is turned on. And then we're going to come in here to CorelDRAW and use the three-point curve tool, and we're going to snap to this guideline. So I'm just going to come along, and we'll give it a little bit of curvature. The amount of curvature is really up to you. So you can see uh, we have done that. Now our line is about, oh, it's about uh, three, three and three-eighths. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to du uh, duplicate this design, uh, this arc. Uh, we hit the plus key on our keyboard, and then we're going to flip it horizontally and vertically. Grab it by the node over here, click and drag, and drag it to this node over here. Now, right now, we have two individual line segments. I'm going to just click on my guideline and dispose of it by hitting my delete key. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these two line segments and combine them into one. If you look over here in the object manager, you see they are, in fact, two individual line segments. So over here on the editing tab, we're going to use the join paths function. So I've, I've asked it to join any path that's within two tenths of one millimeter. So when I go ahead and choose join paths, it went ahead and joined that into a single curve. Now we're going to come over here to our stone fill tab, and now you can kind of see we have this curvature of the flag going. Now we're going to choose 22 steps. The amount of steps is really up to you, but we'll choose 22 steps and hit the down arrow, and you can see it creates a bunch of duplicates for us. Now it's at this point um, we can decide how big we want our design. Um, right now you see the design is 6.6 6 inches wide, which I think is fine for what we're going to be doing. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to come in here and we're going to go ahead and add stones to these lines. So I'm going to select all the lines and come over here to my stone tab. And of course, you know, uh, our flag is um, both uh, red and white. So we're going to go ahead and add all crystal stones to begin with. And now all those lines have stones. And the flag begins and ends with red stripes. So we're going to select the first two rows. I just clicked on one hold my shift key down and click on the other, change my color to light cyan, and we can either choose add stones, and that will automatically change the color, or we could choose rename and fill. Either function gets the job done. You can see all those stones along those entire paths uh, are renamed now and recolored. So now we're going to do that for the remainder of the design all the way down. So we're going to skip to, and then we're going to recolor to. Skip to, and we're going to recolor too. Now this last one obviously we're not going to use uh, because our flag begins and ends with red stripes. So we have something that kind of looks like this. Now if you don't think that's enough, um, you can certainly uh, select a stripe here. Go back to our stone fill tab and what we'd have to do is we'd have to add two crystals and two reds and then we take these two reds here in the middle. Let's go ahead and grab those two. And we'll go back and switch those back to crystal. Go back to our stone tab, rename it fill. Let's see here. There's one. And grab this one. Sometimes they're <laughs> a little tricky to grab, so let's zoom in tight here. And there we go. Now we can grab it a little bit easier. There we go. All right, so we just added a couple of extra rows uh, if you decide you think you need it. Now, from there, what we're going to do is we're going to actually break these stones all apart. So we're going to click on Break Stones. And then we're just going to come in here and grab a swath of stones. Now, we don't really know exactly how many we need, but let's just grab a swath of stones. You know, a fair bit. Um, and we're going to change those stones to blue. So we're going to come in here and choose Cobalt Blue, and we'll choose the Rename and Fill function. And we got most of the stones that we needed, but there's a couple of stragglers that we didn't get. So let's come in here and select those ones that we didn't get, 
and we could just come in here and make a few selections and hit that rename and fill till we pick all those up you know we obviously we don't want to pick up any of the red ones um, but you make just little selections to get all the ones picked up that we need now what we need to do is take these stones that we've selected and we need to add in our uh, stars and so what I'm gonna do is every other stone I'm gonna select every other one so I select one hold my shift key down and just go every other one every other one switch over to crystal color rename and fill and you can see there okay and we just do that all the way across every other one rename and fill just like so okay so now we skipped the first row and we at the end we have solid blue which we want and so now we need to go all the way up so we're gonna skip a row and then we're gonna go in here and just every other one vertically as well you see that there so every other one vertically as well now at the top here we have a situation because we have and I'm, I'm all about symmetry and so we have an extra row of stones in here that we don't need because down at the bottom you see we have a single row of stones and so at the top I want there to just be a single row of stones so this second row of blue here I don't want so what we're going to do is show you a little a tip here uh, in Easy Stone. That's why some of these tools exist. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to double click on this second row of stones, the path. Double click on the path. Okay. That selects the path with our shape edit tool. And if I double click on it again, I can add a node to the path. And then over here in my editing tab, I can choose break at nodes. Okay. Now if I select my path, and let me just give it a different color so we can see it. See how I changed my path to green? Well, when I come over here to my Selections tab, I can say Mark that path, Mark Object. And so if I zoom out here, now I have nothing selected at the moment, right? So if I come over here to On Outline and choose Select by Outline, it says there are no items selected. Would you like to search the entire document? Yes and it will make a search and then it selected all those stones along that one path and when I hit delete they're all gone so I just come in here and hit the delete key on my keyboard and that will delete them see there they are I'll go ahead and hit the delete there we go so now they're all deleted so now you might be saying, well, what do we do with this gap? That could be a problem. And it's actually very easy to resolve um, thanks to Corel Draw. So we're going to select that first row of blue stones there, and we're going to hit Shift A. And what that does is it evenly distributes those stones in a vertical manner. So every row, that's all you need to do. Shift A, and those sh stones are shifted. And then so for every row we just go on down the line shift a make sure you get just one row of stones at a time and just go all the way over and you will get that even distribution so we're selecting the first stone the last stone so the first blue stone the last blue stone in the row okay and then every stone obviously in between and hitting shift a and it's automatically distributing those stones vertically so that the stones have an equal spacing between them. This way we maintain our symmetry in our design and we can just go ahead and finish all the way across. It's fairly easy to select those stones you know we can as long as we don't completely select the the row next to it we can certainly overlap our selection so we don't have to be super precise and same thing with our red stones at the bottom. Uh, we can overlap those as long as uh, we don't overlap them too much and accidentally select those as well. So on down the line, just hit Shift A, Shift A, um, as we select each one of these rows. And we have one more row of stones here. There we go. So now all those stones have been shifted. And so now all we have to do is we're going to skip and we're going to come in here and do our recoloring. So we're just going to every other stone, go back to our stone tab here and hit that rename and fill. And then back on down the line here 
for each one of these rows. We hit that rename and fill. Skipping a stone here and a stone there. And we just have to do that for each one of our rows of stones that we sorted. And you can play around with the pattern uh, of this. Uh, this, uh, uh, this pattern obviously keeps the symmetry, but you can try different things, you know, depending on how big of a flag you're going to make. So we just go ahead and, I'm, and again, I'm selecting my first stone and then holding my shift key down and selecting the other stones. And I accidentally selected two stones right next to one another, so I did that twice. So we'll switch back over to our cobalt blue. And looks like this one is why I didn't select. There we go. And we'll switch that back to crystal. There we go. Oh, I see what I did here. I got messed up on the top here. So we'll <laughs> switch those back to cobalt blue. And then we'll select the proper stone and switch those back to crystal. It's easy to do. Because sometimes they just all kind of blend together. All right, so that uh, takes care of that. So then what we're going to do is we're going to select all of our stones and right-click to get rid of any outline uh, that those stones may have, which, which you can see that looks nice. And then what we can do is come over here to our Selections tab and choose the Select Defined Paths. So all those uh, paths that we had originally created, uh, for our stones to sit on. We're going to get rid of all those and then uh, we can get out our kitchen shears and we can trim our flag back if we think it extends too much. Um, whatever you want to do there, it really doesn't matter. You know, if you want to leave it, uh, leave that extra length there, you certainly can or you can trim it back a little bit. I'm going to trim mine back a little bit because I think that looks a little bit better. And then just to kind of polish the design here a little bit, we're going to come over here to our miscellaneous tab and add a 30 millimeter weed box so we can see our design just a little bit better. And there is our American flag for Memorial Day 2012. So I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial, and I hope you're enjoying your time with your family and friends on this Memorial Day, and thanks for watching.